Okay guys, so now we're just going to go through a basic demonstration of creating a process map using work instructions. So here's an example of a work instruction for a process called uh, search for districts with illegally issued permits. So work instruction, so work instructions are documents staff follow to learn or to remember how to carry out a process. These are also used to train new staff. So let's take a look at this one. You may actually come across several challenges when analyzing these work instructions. So if you see in the top right corner here, you, know, you notice that the date is 2015. So you want to double check that this is the latest version and that the work instruction is up to date with the current way the team does this. And the thing is, many times teams will update their processes due to a change in the system or they discover uh, a better way of doing things. However, the document uh, sometimes is not updated. Yes, yeah, so when you combine this with shadowing staff, you may notice that staff are doing something completely different or at least slightly different in practice to what's written down. So another thing to notice, uh, the, uh, the work instructions are written by staff who live and breathe uh, the process. So you will see many assumptive leaps between steps. So always take a look and, and see if there's any gaps. This is just another reason to actually shadow the staff and fill in those gaps. Always asking questions of what happens next and, and understanding why decisions are made. And this will draw out any steps that are missing. The other thing you may notice, the third thing, uh, is that the processes are written by people so they may not have the logical format that a computer or an RPA bot would understand. So it's up to us to, um, to, to look at that and, and, and write it in a way that the bot will understand. But that will come later. We'll show you how to handle that in the next section. So when drawing a flowchart for RPA, or look, when you're looking to streamline and re-engineer the process, it's advisable to use swim lanes. Some analysts separate their processes into users or roles. However, RPA, we separate this into systems. And you can use several tools like Visio, uh, but there's a, there's a price for that. You can, but there are uh, free online sites like uh, Draw.io. So if you just type in uh, draw IO or draw the IO, it's uh, this first one here. So let's just click on this. So just before we go in, just take a look at the different uh, tools and templates that draw IO has to offer. What we're gonna, as you can see, well, firstly, there are two standard design types of this flow chart. So th these are the two standards. And we're gonna make something similar to this. But as you can see, there are so many different maps that draw the IO offer. So just to have a look through them and, and, and you may find things which are very useful for other parts of your role. But for this, for this course, what we're gonna do is just go into basic, click on blank, and then we're going to create this from scratch. Okay, so if we go into, so what I did is, what I've done is I've clicked on advanced. So if you just click on advanced here, that opens this up. And we're going to do the horizontal swim lanes from left to right. So if you just drag and drop, and then you've got your lanes there. So let's just pull that out. And then let's put a few shapes on the board. So you've got your processes. Need a few of those. You've got your start. 
you got your finish and then these diagonals these diamonds these diamonds are the decisions so you need a few of those so let's go back to the work instruction okay so you might want to lay out your your screen so you split it with the work instruction uh, on the right and the, and the and the process map on the on the left and then you can start to fill in the boxes with each step looking out for which of these steps are actually actually decision points and writing that in there and then joining it up understanding what are the different types of systems that are involved in this and there are some clues for example cloud storage would be one system website another and so have a go pause the pause this video now and have a go at uh, at building this chart building this flow chart and then we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see how diff how it differs to what we build in a moment okay great so hopefully you made some great progress with that so let, let's have a go at, uh, at building this process map. So you probably want to shrink these down a little bit. And you can always you can always zoom in and out. Or you may just want to enlarge this these swim lanes. So what I'm doing is just click on the swim line, highlight that, and then you can drag it, and then that enlarges it. Just giving it enough space for us to put this. So start, finish. Maybe that's about there. So firstly, let's let, let's put a title here. Okay, so that's the title of this of this flow. So how how many? Uh, let's take a look. So we've got PDF, we've got an Acme system, Excel, storage. So we've got about four systems here. Let's put a new one in. So if you just in uh, in draw, you just to create a new to create a new swim lane. You just highlight the swim lane, press Control D for duplicate, and then you've got your fourth row there. Oh, let's just undo that. Okay, so let's drag this up. Okay, firstly, you just want to go ahead and and, and uh, put the titles for each row, for each swim lane, and you can uh, arrange it. And I'll show you how you can arrange it so that the process flow looks a lot neater. But let's just fill it, this in right now. Acme, Excel. PDF. So we're separating it by systems or applications. And the reason being is this shows how data is being handed off between one application to the next. And what we want to see is if there are a lot of back and forth 
between applications, that's something that's quite inefficient. So remember to number your steps, but luckily they are numbered, so let's just copy. Well, let's abbreviate this. Okay. Download data. Download data. If you want to create a new one, you can drag or you can just control D and then that gets you a new box. So step three mentions another system that the web the website of the district. So let's make sure that that's there. So that's not there. So we need to add that in. You see, we've got two websites here. One is the location of the storage, and one is the, the website for the district logs. So again, you press Control D, and you get a new, a new swim lane. And we're gonna call that Let's call that district's website. So as you may see, this, this is a long way from the start. So most likely you start here, and you're going down, you start, sorry, in the cloud storage, that's where you go to the cloud storage. And if you just click this arrow that appears, that links, oh, that links it to that box. Make that a bit tighter. Okay, let's start that again. <laughs> Okay, so delete that. And so what you can do is if you see that green highlight, so you've got these these crosses around the circumference of each shape. So you just click on one of those X's. When it highlights green, then you can pull it over and it locks on to the next shape. Then that's connected and then you can move that along and the arrow uh, the arrow stays connected to both shapes. So, so now we're in the storage location, and then we download the data, connect that. Then we navigate to the website. district website. Best to be clear to remove any uh, ambiguity. And what we want to do is you put the action where you start from and then you navigate. The action to navigate is from the cloud into the website. And then there'll be an action, which is find the list of old forests. And that's 